I just want to um, talk today because right now my heart is kind of hurting um, because I see too much going on. I'm watching TikTok and I'm looking at these guys on here and these people and these women and talking about Shamna and Allah and all this and speaking in tongues. Nobody understands them. As Peter said, if you can't give interpretation, be quiet if you don't have an interpreter. And then you got other people on TikTok sitting there keep hollering the word you got some people on a day and night and all they're doing is hollering they'll quote one scripture then they'll tell people how they're going to heal them and tell people what they're going to do for them not understanding that man can make one hair white or gray man cannot add one stature to your height they can't do a darn thing so these people that are telling you are taking gain for godliness the lord said you can't serve him and mammon you can't serve two if you want to give alms to somebody you give from your heart which means as a, the lady in matthew when Christ said these, when these rich men were giving, and then she, then he looked at this lady who had not much, but she gave all she had. And then, the, and then Christ said, well, she gave me more to me than all that what you gave. And the rich man wondered, well, what do you mean? What do you mean? How? We, we gave way more money. He said, but yet she gave all she had. It's about what's from your heart. Of course, there's men teaching the word, and we're all going through it out here one way or another. And of course, everybody could use a little something. But the thing is, is that when you come out your mouth, when, when you start with a prayer cloth, when you start with anointing oil, when you start with laying of hands, and, and then on the next breath you say out of your mouth that if you give me 50 bucks, if you give me $10, if you send me some money, that you will get your prayers. It has nothing. Get this. Get this. And I'm going to tell you from a man of the Most High, it has nothing to do with the Lord. Zero. Zero. Do you not remember in the book of Acts? When all the people from Israel, from Japan and China, from all over the world, from Macedonia, from Rome, all these people got together. When they got together, they asked and, and, and they were told by disciples that, you know, you know who you delivered up? You delivered up Yeshua. You delivered up Christ, who we call Jesus. And they said, well, what, well, what do we do? He says, repent. And they repented. And when they repented, there was a noise and a rumbling. And when they heard this rumbling, guess what happened next? All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit rushed in and they got each and every one of them. And what did these men do? What did they do? Each one took everything they owned, everything they had in their household, and they went out and they sold it. And what did they do with it? They gave it to the poor, the weak, the widow, the homeless, the fatherless, and the motherless. So there was nobody around who was wanting. So the disciples understood in Matthew when Christ said, I want you to go out, take no food, no raiment, no clothes, not even shoes on your feet. He says, I only want you to take this word, but I want you to give it freely as I give it freely. And so what we've done is we've missed the mark. We become so dumbed down by um, things that are being done on a daily basis to it becomes no big deal. It's second nature. I'm going to give an example. Um, when I was a little kid in the 1970s, and I remember we can get a basket of groceries. In a basket of groceries, you can get two baskets for 75 bucks. But now you come in with two baskets, you're at four or 500 bucks. But people don't think it's no big deal because over time, they've incrementally raised the prices up so you don't notice it. Just like over time, they've taken the wheat, grain, the cattle out of the Bible. And so then they implemented that you got to pay tithes of 10% when it was actually a 10 part. And that 10 part that we gave was only to the Levites. It was to the priests. And when the priests were done away with, that's why the Sadducees, the Sadducees, or the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they wanted to attack the Messiah. They wanted to attack him because he said, no longer are you going to take my people and use them. You turned my father's house into a den of thieves. And he kicked the money changing tables over. He said, from now on, I'm going to die for them. Now, instead of them taking a bird or a dove or a bull, taking it to the priest, and the priest atone, take that blood and they slaughter them and that blood covers their sin. He said, now I'm going to cover their sin. Folks, go to the Messiah. And when you go to him, everything's free. He said he'll take that yoke off your neck that the slave master put on, and he'll put his on. Not that it's not heavy. He said, but it heals you, and it gives you peace. How can you have peace when you constantly got someone saying, in order for the Lord to bless you, you got to give to me? Christ gives this freely. So when you got people on there, and they're talking about, you know, $10 or $50 or $5, go ahead and send to me. Send me this. Or send me that trophy or send me this. Folks, that is not the way the word is supposed to be done. If you want to give to someone out of your heart and you feel they're a godly person, you do that. But whenever you hear anyone 
mixing the word and mammon or money. Know this, it has nothing, nothing, nothing to do with the Lord. Christ said this. He said, I did not come for the rich of this world, but the poor of this world, but rich in faith. So I'm going to ask you, where's your faith lay? Is your faith in man? Are you going to make flesh your arm? Are you going to serve the creator, the creature more than the creator? Are you going to go back to those books and learn that the reason that these, these priests were stripped is so that we wouldn't be in that bondage. And so you would not think that you had to pay your way into the kingdom. Because that new kingdom that's coming down in Revelation 21, it's got 12 gates, and then 12 gates got the 12 tribes of Israel written on them. And these people are going to be law keepers. They're going to be a nation of kings and priests. And with these nations of kings and priests, one thing, one thing that is not going to happen is that money has no place. Diamonds and jewelry have no place. Why do you think in the scriptures the Lord say that a priest or, or, or a man, a holy man, is not supposed to be taking a bribe? Or gift because gifts corrupt gifts corrupt the word gifts start men having different meanings and different they have a different drive the reason why they're teaching the word the Lord said if you save one soul it's like they're saving a thousand so my thing is this do you want to gain money or do you want to gain souls Christ came to gain souls when the Pharisees and Sadducees were asking, why are you teaching to these people? They're sinners. He said, I didn't come for the, for, for the healed. I came for the sick. So, folks, if you got sick people out here and you're talking about you're teaching the word or you're a man of the most high and you're telling truly what's going on and truly you're reading those books, you know you're not supposed to mix money with the word. The pastors, these deacons, these these Buddhists, these rabbis, these uh, Jews, all these people out here who are pushing money in the word, man, you've gotten so far away from the truth that now you turn the truth into a lie. Stop dealing with people who are taking money for gain. You deal with people in this word who's teaching you the word and teaching you that faith comes by hearing and hearing come by the word, and that the only way to get through the kingdom is through Christ. And in order to go through Christ, all you got to do is get in your knees. He said, if you go in the closet, if you pray in secret, I'll reward you openly. So, the prayer cloths can't help you. The anointment oil can't help you. Hmm? All of these people who saying that they can get you, that they can do, they, 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 they're taking credit for the most high. Remember Elijah? Elijah sent his servant. He said, I want you to go heal that boy who's sick. I want you to take him and raise him up. But when Elijah's servant went to do it, guess what happened, folks? He couldn't. Why? Because he had insight for Elijah. He was jealous of it, and the Lord knew it. You see, the Lord searches out your soul, and he seeks the insides. He knows if a man is selling the word for money, there's no power there. Hmm? The Lord is the one who heals. So Elijah had to go back, and he asked the Lord. He entreated of him. And that's what we should do, entreat the Lord. If you ask, if you knock, he says, I will come into you and I will sup with you. We need to be like Elijah. Go to him. And Elijah learned something. It wasn't him. He can't heal anything by his word. That the only way we'll heal, the only way we'll seal, and the only way that the world does not unpeel us is by following that word, the holy scriptures that the prophets wrote. Stop following man. Stop making flesh your arm and know that these men who are taking gain for godliness they're going to go down just want to give you this message